This morning, we are revisiting a double homicide that shocked the world. December, 20, December 2017, billionaire philanthrop excuse me, philanthropist Barry and Honey Sherman were found dead in their Toronto home. What was first described as a murder-suicide soon became a double homicide investigation. And this morning, we are stepping behind the yellow crime scene tape with Kevin Donovan. The chief investigative journalist for the Toronto Star is revealing new details in his new book. It's called The Billionaire Murders. And Kevin joins us this morning. Welcome, sir. Uh, a lot of hard work went into this book, a lot of digging, a lot of research. Uh, how do you feel on the eve of it coming up? Uh, excited, uh, nervous, the, the normal thing for a journalist who's giving birth to something. Um, let's talk about the first 48 hours. I mean, if there's anything I've learned from the television show 48 Hours, it's those are the most important hours in any investigation. Um, you're saying there's a lot that went wrong in the first 48 hours of, of the, this investigation. Yeah, the, the bodies are discovered on Friday uh, of uh, the middle of December and uh, by the evening the Toronto Police Homicide Squad and a divisional officer uh, are in front of the cameras saying uh, there's no sign of forced entry, we're not looking for any outstanding suspects. Uh, the media talks to some sources, this is before I was involved, the media comes out uh, the next day saying this uh, police sources suspect this is a case of murder-suicide. Uh, police uh, over the next uh, a week are doing search warrants. The search warrants always say they're only looking for the killer of Honey Sherman. Barry's not mentioned. As the clock ticks, uh, police are missing certain things, uh, probably missing uh, key interviews. Uh, and now here we are two years later. Can, can you account for why those 48 hours would have gone so against the grain of what people expect from sort of the standard operating procedure in the first 48 hours of an investigation? One of the things that, that I learned during the course of this investigation is that uh, the Bruce MacArthur investigation was unknown to all of us, the serial killer uh, uh, in Toronto. But at that very time, when the Sherman bodies were discovered, tremendous amount of person power from the Toronto Police Force was focused on catching him. So uh, I think the officers assigned to the case were good, but there probably weren't enough of them. Uh, and I think that they, uh, for because they looked at the crime scene and thought that seeing two people with belts around their neck uh, was an indication of murder-suicide, Honey's face had injuries to it, Barry's did not. Uh, they decided that, uh, that it was murder-suicide, and then they go down this tunnel, uh, and that's bad for an investigation, bad for investigators. You have to look at all suspects uh, and all possible suspects in the first 48 hours. Uh, you also tell the story of a tiny little neck bone. Uh, that is very important to the story, and and, and it comes up in the sec in the second autopsy. What, what 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 what's the importance of this tiny little neck bone? We all have a, a bone in our uh, neck uh, called the hyoid bone, and the hyoid bone. Uh, if somebody and this is might be disturbing for morning uh, uh, watchers, but the hyoid bone bone will snap if there's a tremendous amount of force uh, applied. Uh, the, the first pathologist looked at it and said uh, it's not snapped, so it was probably just uh, suicide. Uh, the second pathologist had actually done uh, an academic study that showed that the bone did not have to be snapped to be indicative of a murder. Uh, and so uh, then realized that that plus markings that showed that the, the wrists of the Shermans were, were bound together at one point uh, led him to uh, make the conclusion, which the Toronto Police eventually uh, bought into, that this was a targeted double murder. These were two well-connected um, um, uh, people with a lot of contact in the, of the outside world, and yet uh, after they were um, they, they died, their bodies weren't found for 36 hours. Uh, and you say that there's a perfect storm that can account for that. Well, what's your explanation? Yeah, it's shocking. Wednesday night is the last time they're accounted for. Their bodies are found uh, just before noon on the Friday. Uh, Barry Sherman's uh, one of his very closest friends, man he'd worked with his, uh, his whole life, literally uh, one office across from the other at Apotex. Jack Kay uh, was away in New York with his wife uh, uh, at an event actually arranged by, by Honey Sherman. Uh, so he was out of the office. He would have uh, noticed something was wrong. Uh, the, the kids, uh, it's not that close a family. Uh, his daughter was actually uh, trying to find out uh, when the parents were coming over on the Friday, uh, but they, there was not, nobody was going and knocking on the door. Uh, and so uh, now the bodies are there for, as you say, 36 hours. And, uh, and of course, the trail is going cold. Uh, a big part of your job is digging into info. You try to get key documents unsealed, um, which put you in a position to sort of essentially come into contact with the police detective in charge of the investigation, Detective Dennis Yim. 
Uh, and he told you that they, they did have a theory about the case. What was that theory? Yeah, so I'm trying to get, uh, on behalf of the Toronto Star, documents unsealed that would show us what the police uh, had done. We don't want to uh, damage the investigation, right. but we want to know uh, what, is, what, what sort of work they've been doing, putting public scrutiny on it. And so I had him in court in April, and I was asking him questions, and he seemed to be more open than he'd been before. And suddenly I said to him, uh, so I'm in a courtroom, and I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm, I'm asking questions of this detective. I said, do you have a theory of the case? And there's a pause of about 25 seconds. Uh, my heart was beating a little bit, and then he comes out and he says, yes, we do. And so then I said, well, what is a theory in, in a case like this? And he said, an idea of what happened. And so then I said, do you have a suspect or a person of interest, at least? Uh, and that's when the judge uh, and the Crown attorney and everybody said, no, you cannot, we're not going to reveal that to you. Uh, back in court a month ago, uh, the detective said, we're making progress. Uh, the theory is the same, uh, but we're not going to tell you if we have a suspect. Now, you're, well, at the end of your book, you've got a chapter called The Most Likely Scenario. Um, you don't believe that it was either international spies or a business deal gone wrong. You believe that they knew their killers. Tell me what you can tell me. What can you tell me about what you think happened? Well, there's been so many theories uh, because Barry Sherman was was a litigious a person, a very uh, um, a busy businessman, let's say. Uh, that that's where these theories came from. Uh, I, I think that somebody uh, that the, the the person or persons who did this uh, knew their movements knew that they would both be home, which is very rare for them both to be home on a Wednesday night. They're both so busy with, with you know, charitable events. Uh, knew that they'd be home. Uh, and I think it is quite likely that, that uh, um, th this was an attempt to have a conversation that, that, that went horribly wrong. Do you think, we only have about 30 seconds left, do you think this case will get solved? I do. When I asked Detective Yim uh, last week uh, that uh, question, he answered in the affirmative. Uh, I said, uh, you know, you, you've just uh, had the Toronto Police Intelligence Unit do this report. You're very excited about it. Uh, how do you feel about the case uh, being solved in the near future? And he said, I'm cautiously optimistic. Cautiously opti optimistic. Well, uh, Kevin, thank you so much uh, for the book, for the research. Uh, as we said off the top, this has gripped the world, and the fact that there have yet to be answers that satisfy the public means that uh, the appetite for to know what just happened uh, is, is still very, very high. We appreciate you coming in. Thanks for having me. Uh, the book is called The Billionaire Murders. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.